Almighty God, that is our prayer that you are not going to pass us by. We are gathered in your presence, ready to hear your word. So speak to each one of us and reveal your will through your word upon us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Karibun, sit down. I thank God for his love upon me this morning. He is my Savior, and I thank him for allowing me to walk with him from when he revealed his love uh, upon me. As a family, we thank God that even this morning, his presence has continued to walk with us. The word that the Lord has put in my heart so that we may meditate upon it this morning is the one that we read in the Gospel of Luke chapter 6, beginning from verse 36 to 42. The Lord Jesus Christ was speaking to his disciples and the people who were following him. And he taught them very deep things of the way a Christian should be and live in this world so that you may be different from other people. And he mentioned in that portion of the Bible five virtues which I want us to go through very quickly so that we may have the insight and understanding of what it means to be called a Christian. And I know because this has been spoken many times and it is all written in the Bible, a Christian is the person who is like Christ who believes in Christ, who follows Christ. So when you look at him, and because the virtues and the nature and the character of Christ is well dis uh, uh, explained in the Bible, you are able to say, yes, this brother, this sister, this person, is a Christian. You are not called a Christian because of the many things that you talk with your mouth or the things that you proclaim, but you are known to be a Christian because of the way you live. People determine who you are because of your actions. And therefore, we need to be practical Christians. We need to be Christians wherever we are, whether in our homes, whether in our workplaces, whether in the marketplace, wherever we are. We need to portray Christianity in us when you talk, when you think, when you decide, when, 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 wherever. Your nature should be known easily and you should be recognized very easily who you are. And this is a big challenge, brothers and sisters, to us who are Christians. Because sometimes you may look at a person and you don't find that. Yes, they have the name, they are baptized, but it doesn't reveal in them. And therefore, as the Lord Jesus Christ spoke these virtues, 
and let us go through them so that our Christianity may be practical and uh, I have titled my sermon Practical Christianity. The five virtues which identifies a true Christian, the first one, according to the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 36, he says, be merciful just as your father is merciful. Mercy is a virtue that should be in us. Because we believe in God, we are his followers. Our God is a merciful God. That is his nature. He has carried this virtue with him from the beginning. And if you go through the Bible, you will note his masses, which endures forever. To be merciful is to be able to forgive when we have the opportunity and the power to avenge. You have the opportunity to avenge but you don't do it. That is mercy. Our God had the ability and he continues to have that ability to avenge for the things that we do every day. But he is very, very merciful. And likewise, he wants his followers to be merciful. Merciful to one another. And you remember the story of this person who had borrowed some money from his friend and uh, you remember what happened. This fellow uh, failed to pay and uh, he pleaded for mercy and he was forgiven. But he left that place and faced his is a borrower and his decision was to put that man in prison. And that is how many of us are. God has continued to forgive us, but we do not have that heart of forgiving. If you read Matthew 5, verse 7, we are told and we read, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Virtue number two, the Bible says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not judge. Most of us are very quick to judge. When somebody speaks or when they do something, you do not have time to inquire and find out why that happened. Maybe your child, it may be your friend, it may be your colleague, or just a neighbor. And something happens. We do not have uh, the willingness to find out, to wait, so that you are able to make the right decision upon that act which has been done up against you. And the Bible is requesting us to take time. When you know something, give yourself a moment to try to inquire why it has happened. Do not judge. Take time. Because if God has that character of judging us. He would be judging us every day and I think it will be very difficult for us 
there is this man uh, and you know him Eli he was a priest and he noted the lady there what was the name of the lady Amujui yeah Anu and the Eli judged the lady you are drunk and Hannah was not drunk. He had come to the temple to pray to God so that she can be given a child. Don't rush to judge. Virtue number three, the Bible says, do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Jesus taught in Luke 6, verse 27, Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who hate you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Learn to listen, be patient, be tolerant. And this virtue is needed in our life. It's critical, particularly in the families between wives, husbands, children, parents, friends, brothers and sisters. Let us be patient with one another. Some are not gifted as others. Some are weak. And you know sometimes we have our own standards which we lay. Even in the people we employ. Some are not gifted the way we think and we want. And they may do things which we do not like. Even teachers. Sindio. Sometimes we, um, I've never been a teacher, but uh, you can find a teacher condemning a kid because he, he, he she is, you know, trying to make them to be the same. But they can't. They are different. They are gifted differently. So don't, don't, don't be quick uh, to condemn. Take time to listen. <clears throat> Take time to judge, to evaluate, and be tolerant. If you did that, there will be peace. There will be peace. Some of us are very quick to call people names. Take your time. Pray to God. This issue, mighty God, I'm not, I don't think I have understood it. Virtue number four, and the Bible says, forgive and you'll be forgiven. At first, God forgave us freely for all the sins we had committed when he offered his son. He forgave us. And that is his nature. He continues to forgive us every day. You remember and you know we are created by God. So if we want to do away with me now, he will do it. Because I'm his creation. And there is nothing I can do to forestall his decision upon me. But our God is a forgiving God. And you remember when Christ was there on the cross, suffering so much through beatings and then even piercing with a, with a spear, the Lord prayed and he said, Father, forgive them. 
for they do not know what they do. It was very difficult, very, very difficult. And you and me as a Christian who are Christ-like, can we learn from this? Some of us are offended slightly, unknowingly, unwillingly, erroneously, and then we burn like bushfire, throwing tantrums and words that should not come from a Christian. And first John. First John chapter 1, verse 8. If we claim, if you read it, it says, if we claim to be without what? Yeah. We? May we also Read at your own time Matthew 18, verse 21 to 35, that I had mentioned, so that you see the importance of forgiving. We must learn to forgive others. And we just remember every day what would happen to us if God did not forgive us. Because we are all sinners. May we try to do away with this issue of uh, self-righteousness uh, because we always, uh, that is our nature. May the Lord change us, this business of self-righteousness. Virtue number five. The Bible tells us this portion which we are reading Give, and it will be given to you. This one is not easy. It is very difficult. Give. You are not giving at a price. You are not giving with a value. No. There is no expectation of a return. You are giving freely. Freely you have received, freely you give. We have received free gift from God of life. Of all that I am is given to me. There is nothing that I have formulated or created or made. Everything that I have is given to me freely. Don't be stingy. Some of us are very, very, very stingy. In us, the issue of giving, no. Not freely. It must be at a price, at a cost. But the Lord Jesus Christ gave us freely. God gave us freely. All that I am is given to me freely. All that I have is given to me freely. And this is why the Lord is urging us to give freely. What is that you cannot give? Between partners, between friends, what is that so important and so precious that you cannot give? If we received freely from God, may we give freely to those who are in need. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only son. He didn't have anything else. He didn't have two sons. And he gave freely so that we may be saved. Those who give generously shall be rewarded generously. Hebrew 13, 1 to 3. Keep loving each other, 
as brothers. Acts 20.35 It's more blessed to give than to receive. And therefore, may these virtues, five of them, which we have read in this portion, continue uh, to be in us so that wherever we are, we shall not lose any opportunity to do good. We shall not lose any opportunity to confuse people. People will be able to tell who we are because of our nature, because of our doings, because of our character. May the Lord help us so that we may be practical Christians wherever we are and in whatever we do. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.